Good morning, good morning to you and to all. On today, we just greet you for the, on behalf of the Rivers of Living Water, where our leaders are Apostle Steve, uh, Rod Stevenson and Selena Stevenson. We just want to, um, we apologize. We had a, uh, some technical difficulties, but we're not going to let the enemy stop us on today. Come on, just begin to rejoice. We're going to go ahead and go right into an accessory. Come on, just begin to stir yourselves up. Come on. We just thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, Lord, that you are our Lord and Savior. We exalt your name today, O oh God, and we come before you, Lord, we'll rejoice. For this is the day that you have made, and all those, uh, Lord, will rejoice and be glad in it today. Come on and be excited on today. Uh, come on, Father, we lift up your name, O oh God, Lord, with praises. Uh, let praise, O oh God. God, Lord, arise in this hour. Let praise, oh God, uh, Lord, arise, oh God, Lord, out of the mouths, uh, Lord, of your sons and daughters. We decree, Father, Lord, that today, uh, Lord, that we will praise your name, oh God, and we will give your praise to no, none other, oh God. Let every other name, oh God, Lord, bow, uh, Lord, unto you, oh God, because you are, uh, Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Uh, you are our Father. You are, uh, Lord, a good, good Father. You are the Master, the Lord, uh, and the King of all kings, oh God. And so, Father, our hearts, uh, Lord, rejoice even now, oh God, that we are in the presence, uh, Lord, of the Holy One of Israel, oh God. We thank you today, oh God, Lord, that you are with us for your word says, uh, where two or three come together, oh God, in your name, uh, Lord, you shall be in our midst. And so, Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, that you are in our midst today, oh God, that you are with us, uh, Lord, in this place, uh, that you are with us, oh God, in our homes, uh, Lord, that you uh, have uh, saturated uh, your presence upon us, oh God. And so, Father, we declare uh, on today, oh God, that our praise, oh God, uh, Lord, will be unto your name, O oh God. Uh, we exalt you, O oh God, because you are uh, Lord the great I am. We exalt your name, uh, Lord, today, O oh God, Lord, because all that you have done. Uh, Lord, we are the people that will not forget, uh, Lord, the benefits that you have given unto us. Uh, the love, O oh God, that you have spread upon us, O oh God. Uh, Lord, we are, uh, Lord, grateful, O oh God, uh, Lord, that you have given unto us your spirit, uh, and therefore, O oh God, Lord, we will run, uh, Lord, with it, O oh God. Let today, O oh God, uh, Lord, be a day, uh, Lord, that your people rejoice in your name, O oh God. God, uh, Lord, let, let Zion, oh God, begin to lift up her voice, uh, Lord, of uh, praise, for you are wonderful, oh God, uh, you are a wonderful counselor, you are the prince of peace, uh, you are a mighty God, uh, and therefore, oh God, we lift up a mighty praise unto your name, uh, and we, oh God, come before you, oh God, uh, Lord, thanking you, oh God, for all that you have done, uh, we thank you for this morning, uh, we thank you for the gladness that you put upon our heart, uh, we thank you, oh God, Lord, for righteousness, uh, Lord, we thank you, oh God, for laying down your life, uh, Lord, that we may have it, uh, we give you our Honored on today, O oh God, uh, and Father, we decree, O oh God, uh, Lord, that even that you are, uh, Lord, the God of our joy, uh, Lord, we come before you, O oh God, uh, Lord, joyous, uh, Lord, in this time, O oh God, knowing, uh, Lord, that everything that will come, uh, Lord, unto our lives today, O oh God, that you have sent it, uh, Lord, that raise up sons and daughters, O oh God, uh, we give you praise today, O oh God, because you are the one, uh, Lord, that is the lover of our souls, uh, you are the God, uh, Lord, that put joy upon the heart, uh, Lord, of man, we rejoice, uh, Lord, in your name today, O oh God, and we declare Claire, there is no other name, uh, Lord, that is greater than yours. There is no other name, uh, Lord, that is matchless to you, O oh God. Uh, for every other name, O oh God, uh, Lord, must bow before you, O oh God. Uh, and so today, O oh God, Lord, we will not let the rocks cry out for us. Uh, but, Father, we stir up a praise in our bellies today. Uh, we stir up a praise upon our lips. Uh, and we acknowledge you, O oh God, Lord, for who you are. Uh, you are Elohim. Uh, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Tescanu. Uh, you are, O oh God, uh, Lord, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, you are Jehovah, O oh God, uh, Lord and Master over our lives, O oh God. Uh, we rejoice, O oh God, uh, knowing that your word, O oh God, Lord, will never fail us. Uh, we rejoice in you, O oh God, because you have never... Uh have failed us, oh God. You are the faithful one. For even as your word has gone, Lord, before us, oh God, it has never failed the righteous, oh God. We thank you today, oh God, that you are holy, that you are faithful, oh God, Lord, in all your ways, that you are not a God that changes your ways, oh God, because external or internal variables. You are the same that you were the same today, and you will forever be, oh God, Lord, a faithful God. And so, Father, we thank you today, oh God, that you have inherited us, Lord, as some and daughters uh, that you have inherited us, oh God, uh, Lord, the kingdom of heaven. And so, Father, we come, uh, Lord, to praise you today. Uh, come on and begin to worship him. Uh, come on and begin to open up your mouth uh, wherever you are right now and begin to lift up his name. Uh, come on and begin to thank him that you have life now. Uh, come on, begin to thank him because you have strength. Uh, come on and thank him this morning uh, because you are uh, up uh, and you are ready uh, for this day. Come on, uh, for this is the day that the Lord has made uh, and we will be glad. Come on and rejoice with me today. Uh, 
rejoice. I say again and rejoice. Come on and begin to sing a song unto him, for he is wonderful in all his ways. And so, Father, today we thank you, O oh God, Lord, that your joy nor comes upon us, O oh God, that even as the trials and tribulations arise before us, O oh God, that we will not faint or get weary. Lord, we rejoice, O oh God, because we are confident, Lord, in your word, O oh God, and your consolation, Lord, of your word, O oh God, Lord, brings joy into the heart of your people, knowing, O oh God, that your word will secure us, that your word will protect us, O oh God. We decree and declare now, O oh God, Lord, that by joy, Lord, we will stop upon every enemy, Lord, that will rise against us, Lord, that we will cut off, O oh God, Lord, every attack, Lord, from my enemies, O oh God, because we are your sons and daughters of the Most High. For you said, O oh God, that you will keep us safe. Those who run unto you, O oh God, Lord, are protected, O oh God. And so, Father, we declare, O oh God, that no weapon, Lord, of hell, O oh God, Lord, will defeat, Lord, your righteous, O oh God. But, Father, that we shall stand upon your word and know, Lord, that we are safe, O oh God, and that we are victorious people, O oh God, because your word says greater is he in us, O oh God, than him that is of this world. So, Father, we will not fret, Lord, of the enemy, O oh God. We will not back down. We will not turn away from the battle, O oh God, because you have taught, Lord, our fingers to war and our hands to fight. And therefore, O oh God, we stand, Lord, upon your word and upon your promises today, O oh God. And we rejoice knowing, O oh God, Lord, that the enemy is beneath our feet, Lord, on today, O oh God. Lord, that every enemy, Lord, that will come against our joy, every enemy that will try to steal, Lord, the peace that comes from heaven, O oh God. Lord, we rebuke it now in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare, O oh God, Lord, that we are one with you and you are with us, O oh God. For your word says if we abide, Lord, in you, O oh God, that you will abide in us. And so, Father, we thank you today, O oh God, Lord, that you have given us your, your victory, O oh God, that you have given us joy and peace. We praise your name today, O oh God, because you are wonderful, O oh God. Lord, and you are to be worshipped, O oh God, Lord, in spirit and truth. And so today, Lord, we will not forget your word, and we will stand upon it, O oh God. We will put it on the pond, Lord, of our hand, and engraft it upon our hearts, O oh God. And we will declare, O oh God, unto the enemy that he can do nothing with us, that he can have no victory over us. We will tread upon every enemy. We will tread upon the adversaries because of your word, because your word is true, O oh God. And so, Father, today we just thank you, O oh God. Come on and begin to just lift up a praise. Begin to glorify him. Come on, Father, we thank you today. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise, O oh God. And so, come on, just begin to just give him a praise. Come on, begin to shout out wherever you are. Come on, God has given you the victory. God has given you peace. God has given you strength. He has given you wisdom. He has given you knowledge. He has given you understanding. He has given you everything pertaining to life and to godliness. Come on, and begin to lift up your voice with me today. Oh, Jesus. Woo. Such powerful powerful prayer my god my god thank you for joining and tuning in with us today Woo, we are ready we are excited to worship the lord with you we're so glad that you took time out of your busy schedule to honor the lord and to partner with us as we go before the father today well before we move any further we want to just want to tell you how you can give in support of our ministry we have many ways that you can give your financial support. You can use our cash app. That's dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. You can also visit our website at R-O-L-W Muskegon.com. And there you could use PayPal or your debit or credit card. You may also mail your generous gift uh, by making a check or money order payable to R-O-L-W-M-I. One more time, that's R-O-L-W-M-I. The mailing address is 1550, that's 1550 East Lakedon Avenue in Muskegon, Michigan. And finally, you can also use our text to give platform. So simply text the word give and a dollar amount to 231-221-2160. One more time, that number is 231-221-2160. Just text the word give and a dollar amount, and we will gladly receive your cheerful gift. Saints, God bless you. On behalf of Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson, we want to say welcome one more time. Let's get ready to go higher. 
We want you to partner and join in with our worship team as we give praise, as we honor the Lord in worship and in praise and in song. And then right after that, get ready for the word. It's going to move you. It's going to stir you. It might challenge you. It might even check you. But I know this. It is from the throne of God and it will equip you for today. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want you right where you are to just begin to lift up your hands and begin to magnify the Lord right where you are because the Bible, it begins to tell how in Revelations 4, it says, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Come on. He is the one which was and is and is to come. Come on, I want you right where you are to just begin to declare the holiness of our God because he is a worthy God. It said that they had eyes within and without. I want you to know that sometimes our eyes is to see the holiness of God. <laughs> it's for us to set our eyes on him and his beauty. Hallelujah, come on. You are God and God alone. You are king who sits on the throne. You are God and God alone. You are king who sits on the throne. Help me say you are. You are God and God alone. You are our king. You are You are our God. You are God. You are and God alone. You are our King. You are King who sits on the throne. Come on, tell them who He is. You You are are God and God alone. Come on, you're seated on the throne, cause you you are King who sits on the throne.
the one which was because when you look back over your life when I look back over my life <laughs> he was the one who was holy then he was faithful then he was righteous then oh God and then we say is I'm talking about my presence I'm talking about your presence you better know that he is the one right now in the middle of your situation he's still a holy God he's still a faithful God he's still a righteous God and then when I look to my future because he is the one that goes before me his holiness has already gone before me his righteousness has already gone before you his faithfulness is already gone before you come on and tell him one more time the one which was and is and is to come the one 
which was and is and is to come. He is the one which was and is and is to come. I'm basking in your glory, for you are God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is Adonai. He is the one which was and is to come. And he's coming with glory. He's coming with power. Come on, rejoice right where you are at. Hallelujah. The king is coming. Hallelujah. Well, I greet you today. Greetings from rivers of living waters, Muskegon. I give honor unto you today. I give honor unto my senior leaders, Apostle Rod and Prophet Selena Stevenson. I won't be, be before you long. I'm going to get right into the message. I got a lot of scriptures that I'm going to be releasing today, and they coming from all different uh, translations. So uh, all I can say is uh, just uh, jot them down and look them up on your uh on your personal time but this is a season and an hour where i believe that this is the time of the kingdom i believe that the kingdom of god is at hand and the title of my message today is wake up the foundational scripture is coming from romans chapter 13 verse number 11 and I'm going to read uh, from the God's Word translation. And it says that you know the times in which we are living. It's time for you to wake up. Our salvation is nearer than we when we first became believers. The times which we are living, our very own apostle has given us a blueprint and get made us aware of the times that we are in. And I'm and I'm sending a uh, I'm releasing a clarion call to every throughout the nations today, throughout the world today, to wake up, to wake up because the kingdom of God is at hand I'm talking about the kingdom of I'm talking about the kingdom I'm talking about the governing influence of a king over his territory impacting it with his personal will and intent and purpose and producing a culture that reflect his values his morals in the nation of the earth this is the time of the kingdom people it's time to do away with religion see religion it prepares you to leave the earth but the kingdom empowers man to dominate in the earth and see the religion focuses on heaven but the kingdom it focuses on earth see the key the religion it reaches up to heaven but see the kingdom it brings heaven down to earth and this is the time where there's going to be power and demonstration of the kingdom in the earth hallelujah and even not only with that the kingdom coming there is also a release of the favor of god the grace of god and first peter 1 and 13 it says gird up the loins of your mind and hope unto the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of jesus christ and the amplified it says so prepare your minds for action be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and moral alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. See, that word said, that word action, it is the effect and the power of one body exerted to one another motion produced opposed to rest and sleep peter tells us in this scripture to be ready and sober-minded meaning wake up because grace is coming for us and see that grace can preserve you that grace in us uh, Titus 2 and 11, it says that with that grace, it comes with salvation. See, the grace of God that brings salvation. So with that grace, that favor is coming salvation. Salvation, perseverance, uh, deliverance, 
uh, preservation, deliverance, and protection in the days to come. And so now we have to come to a place where we wake up, wake up out of sleep. And the word sleep, we know that there are many words that uh, define sleep. But in the Webster's 1828, I found a definition that really per, uh, pertains to what we are seeing now. To sleep in this day is to live thoughtlessly, to be careless, inattentive, or unconcerned, not see or perceive, or hear or receive truth. You see, people that are spiritually sleep they are like influenced by their flesh they're influenced by their flesh their sinful nature the uh, the worldliness and the, and according to romans 8 and 5 it tells us that those that are living in the way of the flesh give their minds to the things of the flesh but those that go in the way of the things of, of the spirit they to the things of the spirit see for the mind of the flesh is death but the mind of the spirit is life and peace and we know that where the mind is the body follows and so this is an hour where we must be ready and focus and wake up out of sleep and you hear some different areas of sleep that I want to hit on and you may find yourself in one of these areas where you are sleeping at I know I have found a way of uh, area where I have been asleep in but I, I lose the charge today to wake up and the first thing I want you to do is wake up out of the sleep of sin or wake up out of the sleep of sin 1 Corinthians 15 and 34 tells us to awake to righteous. Awake to righteousness. See, to be righteous means to be in alignment, right standing with authority. To have correct fellowship and right relationship with God. See, Romans 13 12 tells us that the night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty coals and put on the armor of shining light. We am talking about the armor of God. I'm talking about the helmet of the salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. I'm talking about the shield of faith. I'm talking about the belt of truth. And if you ain't got no truth in your in this hour, then you will be lost in this time and age. You will be deceived. You will be, you will drink the Kool-Aid, as our apostle said. You will be drinking what the world is giving unto you. And this is a time in the hour where we must have an ear to hear truth. We must know the truth. We can no longer be intoxicated with the things that come through the news media and the report of the Lord. It's either you're going to believe the report of the Lord or the re report of the world. This is a day and an hour where we're at the crosswords where we're going to have to choose whom we are going to serve hallelujah there's another pl place in us that's uh another place to sleep and it's called this uh and it's called carnal security and negligence carnal security and and uh negligence and i'm coming from uh luke uh 21 and 35 Luke 21 and 35, awake out of carnal security and negligence. And I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. It says, but be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down and depressed with the giddiness and the debauchery and the nausea of self-indulgement indulges and the worldly worries of life. And then that when the Messiah comes, we will not when the messiah returns will not come on you suddenly like a trap see in this day and hour where everything that is going on people have really have took their life back they have not given the thing they have not uh submitted and uh to the things of god they have not yielded or submitted unto what god wants them to do they basically live in their best life they ba they basically are doing them in this hour they are doing what they want to do they have no reverence for god and what god has called them to do they just saying that their mindset is it is what it is 
it is what it is. Well, I beg to differ. I tell you today that it's what God says. And it's a time and an hour where we can no longer be intoxicated with worldly and carnal living because we will miss the grace that is coming unto us if we don't, if we not awaken out of this place of self, uh, spiritual, um, uh, and carnal security and negligence. See, in the word, I have often thought, I had thought about even in a day and an hour, because this is a day and an hour where uh, sin and wickedness has increased in the earth. And what we're seeing even in now is, is, is judgment. I believe it's judgment for the sin and wickedness that has increased in the earth. And then I had looked back upon scripture at the first time where the judgment came upon man, even when God decided to flood the earth. Uh, in Genesis chapter uh, in chapter six, verse five, I want to go there real quick. In Genesis chapter six, verse number five, I'm reading out of the NLT version. It says. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything that they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. And this is some and this, and this is what is transpiring in our days as we talk about even uh, those that have been put in places of leadership. Those are the governing authorities over the nation, over the land. We, I mean, they're passing some some laws that are just straight up wicked. You look at the place of the legalization of marijuana. You look at all things that they have legalized that are opposed to God's laws, the lawlessness that they trying to uh, uh, invoke even in our land, which we know that God is a, God is a lawful God. Lawlessness cannot run in the land because if there is no law, then the people are run rampant and do whatever they want to do. People want to take up they be their own law. They want to don't want to submit to authority, and it is never how God intended it to be. It intended for us to submit unto his rule his reign his laws the law of the word of truth but listen at in verse number uh six it says so the lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth it broke his heart and the lord said i will wipe this human race i have created from the face of the earth yes i will destroy every living thing all the people the large animals the small animals that scurry along the ground even the birds of the sky i am sorry i ever made them but listen to it right here verse number eight but noah found favor with the lord and you might say well I have I had thought how did the Lord find I mean how did Noah find favor with the Lord? Listen in verse nine. It tells us this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the uh, on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with the Lord. So I'm telling you, even in this time that. It's time to wake up out of that place of sin and carnality and uh, carnal security and spin and negligence and begin to awake into uh, unto righteousness because in this hour the the judgment of the Lord is coming upon the wicked but you that are that are walking in close fellowship with the Lord you that are in right standing with the Lord grace is coming unto you remember I said it in the, in the latter and before that the that the uh, grace the grace to be ready for action but the grace of God is coming upon you and that grace even like that grace that favor that preserved Noah and his whole family that grace is coming upon you if you stand in a place of righteousness that it'll preserve your whole lineage if you look in the word of the Lord the uh Noah whole family got into a boy his whole 
family was preserved. Why? Because he walked righteously before God. He walked with God. He was in right fellowship with the Lord. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you today, all it takes is one. It, all it takes is one to be in right standing with the Lord and the, in the favor of the Lord. The grace of our God can come upon you and preserve your whole bloodline. So I'm, I'm begging you today and I'll say, awake up out of the sleep of sin and awake unto righteousness. Moral living, the living that glorifies our God. Hallelujah. Another place even in the even uh and this is another place where we have been where i believe that the world or we have been sleep at and now i personally can identify with where at this place where i have been sleep and it's the sleep of sloth the sleep of sloth. I'm talking about laziness. And so I say awake out of the sleep of laziness. Proverbs 19 and 15 in the Amplified says that laziness casts one into a deep sleep unmindful of lost opportunity. See in this day and age where the COVID has hit, it has shut us all down. And we have been just sitting in the house like, oh, I don't know what to do. We we just been watching. We didn't watch every series on Netflix. We went watch all recordings of of uh, TV shows. We even started watching new TV series that we had never watched. And it's all and we and the truth of the matter is we've been distracted. And this be surely could have been a this is a time where God is telling us to get in my face get in my presence even cultivate the gifts that you have uh that i have placed on the inside of you son because grace is coming unto you that will propel you that will advance you into your next and so i asked even the question what have i been spending my time doing i've been watching too much tv i tell on myself i've been watching too much tv i've been lazy god has given each and every one of us a gift a gift and what have we done to cultivate that gift uh to, to to cultivate that gift to enhance that gift to bring glory unto god to go unto the next level are we cultivating the gifts of god that he has has given unto us or are we just sitting down idle see we will miss god if we don't discipline ourselves to do right habits we will miss god if we don't come we must develop right habits that cultivates the gifts that's congruent with our call see our habits determine our destiny and our character our habits determine our character and our character determines our destiny how we use our time every day it defines our lives and if we God has given each and every one of us a gift and if we stand down on that gift I don't care if you may be one even say for instance there is a, a greeter you might be a prayer warrior what have we done to even cultivate that, 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 that gift that God has put on the inside of us. And I relate this, and I thought about this as a relation to the parable of the talents. Let's, look, let's go there in Matthew 25, verse number 14. You see, God will judge us on that if we are lazy. We can no longer be lazy as it pertains to the things of God. The word of the Lord says that if you put your hands to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. In Matthew 25 and 14, he goes on to say, I'm going to skip all the way down. And I'm going to start at verse 21, uh, verse number 20. It says, the servant to whom he had entrusted five bags, I'm going to say, I'm going to replace that and say gifts, of silver came forth with five more. Okay, this servant, the, the gift that uh, the Lord have given this servant, he had, he, 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 he cultivated it and he enhanced that gift. He brought forth more. He was producing. 
And this is an hour where, where God wants us to be prepared to produce, produce fruit. In verse number 21, it says that the master was full of praise. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. In verse 22, the servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, master, you gave me two bags and I earned two more. He produced. The master said, well done my good and faithful servant you have been faithful in handling this small amount so now i will give you more responsibilities let's celebrate together i want to highlight on verse 24 then the servant with one bag of silver came and said master i knew you were a harsh man harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate i was afraid i would lose your money so i hid it in the earth look here is your money back. But listen to what the Lord said to him. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested and I didn't plant and gather crops, I didn't and I didn't cultivate. Why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. See, what it's saying is God will judge us for laziness if we don't produce fruit. It is the reason every the Bible tells us that God created us to produce fruit. He says that any branch in him that do not bear fruit is cast forth as a branch in his stone and to the fire. God says that herein is he glorified that we produce fruit. He also said that I have chosen you and anointed you. I have anointed you and given you gifts that what? You may come and bring forth fruit that you may be so you will be my disciples. It's an hour and a day where we cannot long well, we can no longer be uh, lazy and say idols and not produce. This is a time and an hour where we must be able to bring forth fruit fruit that is congruent with our call and so i say that to this hour that we cannot we got to wake up out of the sleep of laziness we can no longer be lazy until the parent as pertaining to god and what he has called us to do it is if we would just set up and look it's harvest time it is harvest time and those that are, have been asleep, even in the day, and I thank God that he has kept rivers of living water open. There have been many churches that has been just shut down. And I don't, and I don't know why they shut down, but all I can say is that according to the word, maybe they were asleep. Maybe they were asleep. I've seen it in the word according to Nahum 3 and 18. It says that you shepherds are asleep, O king of Israel. Your nobles are lying down and your people are scattered on, on the mountains and there is no one to gather them. I believe that because of the church, have been, that churches have been asleep, then they have been shut down and therefore the people are scattered all abroad. And I, and I say this to the point that this is a time, uh, this is harvest time. We that are awake, we must be awakened. We must look upon the fields for the harvest time is now. There are people out there that are that are out there and they are in need of a home. They are in need of Christ Jesus. They want the real. They want to see the love of God. They want to see the power of God. They want to see Christ in us, the hope of glory. And it's a time for us to awake up out of that place of sin, to awake up out of that place of laziness, to awake up out of that place of, of, of carnal, carnal, carnal carnality and spiritual negligence and begin to be about our father's business because when they see Christ in us they see Christ and that's when they are drawn unto us the Bible says that if I be lifted up if I would draw all men unto you and so when people see God in you when you magnify when you glorify God people will be drawn unto you you don't you don't really have to look for them. Just your presence. Even when you go to the store, when you go uh, on your job, people will be drawn unto you. People, I'm telling you, it's harvest time. It's the time of the kingdom and God's 
favor even to come upon his true church. And I believe that the true church are awake in this hour and they're looking. They're setting their, their eyes are open. They're, they're watching and praying and they are in expectation for God to do the miraculous even in this hour. So I encourage you in this hour, wake up. And even to the place of spiritual deadness, we must awake out of spiritual deadness where we ain't producing. And I equate even spiritual deadness can be two things. To those that are in Christ, it can be, it can be to be unfruitful. But unto those that don't have Christ, you're like a, you're a dead man walking. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 14, for this reason, for this reason it says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine, will shine on you. And to make it plain, even to those that don't have that, uh, uh, to make it plain as it pertains into this scripture where it says, Awake a sleeper and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. And John 6 and 53 in the Amplified, it basically breaks it down in simpler terms where it says, Unless you believe in me as Savior and believe in the saving power which will be shed for you, you have not life in yourselves. So it's a time in the hour if you don't know Christ, just begin to believe and confess him as Lord. Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life, filling with your, filling with, fill you with his spirit. Because he said it in his word that if you don't have my spirit, then you are none of, none of, then you are none of mine. This is the hour, people of God. And apart from Jesus Christ, you have not life. I'm talking about eternal life. What does it say in John 1 and 4? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So apart from Jesus Christ, you have not life in you. And so this is an hour where if you don't have Jesus Christ, just begin to confess him as Lord. Just begin to confess him as Lord. Ask him to come into your heart and dwell there and to fill you with his precious Holy Spirit. Renounce the hidden forms of darkness. Renounce sin and embrace righteousness. Because to live in light is to embrace truth versus to darkness, the lust, of the, fly, the lust of the flesh, the eyes, the pride of life, which is not of God. See, to embrace the world is to be in darkness. We can no longer be those that embrace the world. If you look at the begin at, at, in the beginning, the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 2 that the world was without foy and full of darkness. So what makes, we, what makes us think that we can abide in the world and gravitate to the things of the world? The world is, was wicked, was darkness from the beginning. But he said that Christ has come to give us light. And except you have the light in, except you have the light in you, you have, we have no life. And so... Even now, I just pray that Christ will light upon you, that he open up your eyes, that that light will shine upon the darkness and drive it away from, from your life. That you will begin to develop a hunger and a desire and a thirst for righteousness, righteous living, that everything that we'll do will be pleasing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. See, the unrighteous, they have no part in the kingdom of God. The kingdom is at hand. Wake up, and you won't, if you won't take part in the kingdom that is coming. If you're not in right standing with the Lord, if you are not in right fellowship with the Lord, I said it again, to be righteous is to be in alignment with the authority. 
to be in right fellowship with the authority, the authority of heaven, the, uh, the, the authority, the Lord God creator of heaven and earth. And so in that, I'll say, put to death whatever that is worldly on the inside of you. The Bible says in Colossians 3 and 5 that we got to put to death with sexual sin, perversion, passion, lust, greed, which is the same thing as worshiping wealth. Also, get rid of hot tempers, hatred, lying, cursing, obscene language, and all similar sins. But we but the Bible tells us in Romans 13 and 13 that we should live decently as people who live in the light of the day. Wild parties, drunkenness, sexual immorality, promiscuity, rivalry and jealousy cannot be a part of our lives. Instead, the Bible tells us to live like the Lord Jesus Christ lived. And then and then forget about Saturday and then we'll forget about satisfying the desires of the flesh and in order to live like the lord jesus lived we must wholly submit ourselves unto ephesians 4 and 22 through verse 24 we must submit ourselves to ephesians 4 and 22 through 24 and it reads instead let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes put on the new nature created to be like god truly righteous and holy stop telling lies let us tell our neighbors the truth for we are all part of the same body so in the, in that place we got to put on the new mind we have to renew our mind we have to be those that keep the charge that was given unto us in Joshua 1 and 8 and in Psalms 1 and 2 to meditate upon this word day and night. May day and night delight in the law of the Lord. Meditate in the day and night. It's the only way that we're going to be able to get rooted and grounded in this place of truth. So that when the when the world, when the vehement wind, when the storms of life, the things that are transpiring now with the COVID and all this lawlessness that is going through or going on in the land, we won't be moved. Why? Because we're found on the rock. We're we're building on the firm foundation. We're building on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're building on trust we're building on truth and we're standing on truth we are movable we are unshakable and we are bowed in that place of truth it is the re this is how we should live and i give an example because i look at uh the life of job and when i seen how job lived what the bible depicts job's character i say oh my goodness if you look at Job 1 and 1 in the voice translation, the Bible records that Job was a very good man. His character spotless. His integrity unquestioned. In fact, he so believed in God that he sought to honor him in all things. He deliberately avoided evil in all of his affairs. He deliberately avoided evil. And above all, that's what I've seen in that scripture. He sought to honor God. And this is a place where me personally, I can say that I've, I missed it in a place of honor. See, there's honor is not without love. And I was uh, just talking about the place of going to a next dimension in that place of honor. You see, I have gotten to myself that I would do what's right because it's the right thing to do. Because the word tells me to do it. I'll submit. I'll comply with it. But I'm in a place now where everything that I would, but, but I do it because I want to do it out of the right heart. I want to do it out of love. I want to do it because... I want to do it. I love to do it. Not, just, not from a place of submission. It's another level. Because if we honor God, then God honors us. But see, the thing is, it's like I can demonstrate honor. But 
Will it be the honor that comes from God? It's the honor God quality. It's that honor God quality. And so in that place, I said, you know, I really want to get to a place. I really want to get to a place where everything that I do, I do out of a place of love. And that calls for a place of examination. Because in a place where I can be I can be doing things just because it says to do it. And that's OK. Long as you surrender and submit, that's OK. But I'm going to go to another level and do things out of genuine, genuine love. Not because this is what I'm supposed to do, but love. I hope I pray that you hear my heart as a concern and honor in this in this in this hour because the honor that we should be looking for is the honor that comes from God not the honor that comes from man I believe that there that is where the 30 60 and 100 fold comes from is that when like when the, when you when you honor the Lord that's when he honors you a hundred fold and I'm talking about when you're doing things, when your motives are right, when your heart is right, and you're doing things out of that place of love. See, love activates the faith. Love activates the faith. The Bible says that faith worketh by love. So in this day and hour, I have come to a place where everything that I do, I have to do by faith. And I and it is not genuine if love is not working with if if it's not motivated by love. I don't know why or how I got that people of God, but I know it. It was from the, it was from the Holy Spirit, so I just released that. And everything that we do in this place, and I just even say about the Spirit, awake out of dishonor can no longer be dishonorable but give honor unto those whom honor is due honor honor and in that place i just leave you with luke 12 and 35 and 36 be dressed and ready for active service Keep your lamps burning. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast. So when he comes and knocks, they may immediately open up the door for him. So I say be ready. Be watching. Be praying. Be in expectation. Begin. Don't let this day and age overtake you because the Lord is coming. I mean, when I say the Lord is coming, I mean that the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is at hand. And the Lord is, and with the kingdom is coming grace, favor. But you got to be ready for it. You got to be ready for that grace to be upon you. You got to be prepared. Because when God comes, when that grace comes, it's going to preserve you. It's going to bring deliverance. And it's going to protect you in the days to come. And so as I end this message, I just want to pray a closing over you. I pray even now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that there comes a spiritual awakening unto your people, even in this hour, Father, to wake up out of sleep and slumber, Father. I pray, Father God, even now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, that the old wine skims, Father God, be stripped away, Father God, and that you give unto them new wine skins, Father, that they may receive the new wine, Father. No longer, Father, will they be intoxicated, Father God, with the world, O oh God, with the spirit, O oh God, of religion and tradition, Father God. But I pray, Father God, even now in the name of Jesus Christ, that they be prepared, Father God, to receive the 
anew, Lord God, that they, oh Lord, be an expectation, Father God, to, for what is to come, Father God, grace, Father God, and your kingdom, Lord God, power, Father God, demonstration, Father God, of signs and wonders, Lord, and I pray, Father God, today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, for all, Lord God, that does not know you, Lord God, that they come, Father God, into light of your love, Lord God. I pray, Father God, even now that you encounter them, Father, with your love, Father God, with your mercy, Father God. I pray it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, today that pride, Father God, be broken off of your people, Father God. Today, Father, let, Lord God, the spirit of humility come upon them, Lord God, even in this hour where they will humble themselves, Father God, repent, turn, Father God, from their wicked ways, Father God, and even, oh Lord, I pray for that sobriety, Father God, to come upon them too, Lord. For you told us in your word, Father God, to be sober, Father God. For the enemy, Lord God, he goes about like a, a roaring lion, Lord God, seeking to devour us, oh God. So, Father, I pray, oh Lord, even now that we, oh Lord, be sober-minded, oh God, in this season, Father God, keeping the charge, Father God, to continually watch, Father, and pray, Father God, and begin, oh God, to look, oh God, even, oh God, for your coming, oh God, and even, oh God, be ready for the grace, Father God, your favor, Lord God, that has come upon us, oh God, to, to, to that bring salvation, oh God, that will preserve us, that will deliver us and protect us, Father God, in the days to come. I pray it, Father God, over your people today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I give you the glory. I give you the honor today. We bless you, Father God, for the ears that hear. And we thank you, Father, that the word did not fall, oh God up on on hard ground father god but it will yield for fruit father god fruits of righteousness father god that will be unto the praise and to the glory of you lord god we bless you today father we thank you we give you glory and it's in jesus name amen and amen well i thank you all today for tuning in to our broadcast that is all that i have for you today it was quick but that's how I am, quick and to the point. God bless you and blessings. Well, it's giving time. This is Elder Camp, and I just want to say a word of thanks to all our cheerful givers. Here at Rivers, we have so many ways in which you can support the ministry. You can give by visiting our website, at rolwmuskegon.com. There you can use PayPal or your debit or credit card. You can also use our cash app at dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. You may also mail your generous gift by making a check or money order payable to R-O-L-W-M-I. That's R-O-L-W-M-I. The mailing address is 1550, that's 1550 East Laketon Avenue in Muskegon, Michigan, 49442. Lastly, you can give your generous gift by using our text to give platform. So text the word give and a dollar amount to 231-221-2160. That again is 231-221-2160. Just text the word give and a dollar amount in the body of the text. Saints, the Lord honors you. The faithfulness of every giver helps us accomplish so much. With our giving, we worship God. Our giving impacts the community. Our giving supports families in need. Our giving provides a door of hope to those who are otherwise hopeless. Our giving advances the gospel and the kingdom of God. So to every member, friend, partner, and auxiliary of Rivers, we say thank you. And we declare the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ over your life. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8, God loves someone who is happy to give help to others. And since God loves you, 
He is able to give you more than you need. And I proclaim that you will always have every good thing that you need for yourselves and by the supply of God, you will have enough to do many good things to help other people in Jesus name. God bless you.